Well, I wouldn't be much of a reader if I didn't recommend The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I um, also noticed something when I was rereading this. Actually, in high school, I somewhat avoided it because I was assigned. And one of the things that I learned is in rereading this very uh, thoroughly, and also it's a very quick read, I should say, to start. It's short book, big font, you know, 180 pages. And uh, I read it in two weeks, you know, just took it to the park. And it was a really quick, beautiful read. And I highly uh, recommend it uh, that way. You know, I think it's, it's like, it's one of those kind of weekend reads or a couple of evenings in a row, you could just like devour this. So uh, one of the things that I learned uh, from high school, I wasn't really a, a fan, but I, I loved the beginning and the end. And that's one of the things that like I read in, in high school because I kind of skimmed it and rereading it, I mean, I might have BS my way through a paper uh, back then, but I didn't really recall a lot of the detail. And uh, my reading experience back then was uh, not as, as good, and I, don't, I didn't have the wisdom that I, that I have now in uh, revisiting it. So, you know, very famous book, F. Scott Fitzgerald. I mean, there's so much known about him. Obviously, he uh, fell in love with Zelda, actual person. The book is dedicated to Zelda here at the beginning. And um, the this side of paradise, which made him famous and rich, uh, afforded him the ability to marry uh, Zelda, which she didn't think he was a would be a, a good enough provider. So, luckily, things panned out for him. And uh, the, the Great Gatsby was a big hit. Um, the Oh, I guess like The Beautiful and the Damned, I think, preceded it. Tender is the Night. Um, I started reading that on audiobook a while ago, actually several years ago, and I abandoned it. It wasn't bad, but I would go back to it. The writing was very good. I sometimes abandon books. It's just, it's just my thing. If I'm not feeling it, you know, it, life is too short. So... Um, but anyway, it, it was good, and I might go back to it, and certainly some other uh, work I would, uh, you know, skim it to see if, like, there's kind of uh, anything uh, meaty. Maybe, like, the, the love of the last tycoon might be good, depending what what remains of his original text. So I'd have to s see, like, uh, you know, editor notes. Anyway, here's, like, the, you know, it's all about the uh, jazz age. Um, Anyway, this exemplary novel of the Jazz Age has been acclaimed by generations of readers. The story of the fabulous, wealthy Jay Gatsby and his love for the beautiful Daisy Buchanan of lavish parties on Long Island at a time when the New York Times noted gin was the national drink and sex the national obsession. It is an exquisitely crafted tale of, of American 1920s, a true classic of the 20th century literature. Uh, it's true. So, um, oh yeah, one thing I want to, well, I'll mention that after. So, I'll come back to the cover because I have a little bit of a kind of a story about that. So, one thing that I read in high school was the beginning and the end. I mean, we all know these lines. It, it's no real spoiler, but warning, spoiler. Um, in my younger and more vulnerable years, my father gave me some advice that I've been turning over in my mind ever since. Whenever you feel like criticizing someone, he told me, just remember that all the people in this world haven't had the advantages that you've had. So, very, very famous line, you know, in my younger and more formative, vulnerable years. Um, and then the ending, I always loved, and this was something over the years that I would like revisit in a Google search or something, and I would reread these lines online because I love them so much. Uh, Gatsby believed in the green light, 
the orgasmic future that year by year recedes before us. It, it eluded us then, but that's no matter. Tomorrow, we will run faster, stretch out our arms farther. And one fine morning, so we beat on, boats against the current, borne back ceaselessly into the past. I mean, that last line is like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's so famous. What's interesting is like, you know, these, these writers always like rework their last line to perfection. And you see here like the preceding paragraph, it just kind of like ends like, like he can't finish a thought and then it's like, boom, the last line, you know. Um, we saw that in No Beast So Fierce where like there's, there's a line break and then you just get that last paragraph by itself. So it's interesting that authors do that. A great line that I love, actually it's a paragraph, another great paragraph. This is on the second reading recently. I love this paragraph so much and I reread it all the time. I think it's like, it's very indicative of, you know, the great Gatsby. And um, here it is. But his heart was in a constant turbulent riot. The most grotesque and fantastic conceits haunted him in his bed at night. A universe of ineffable gaudiness spun itself out in his brain while the clock ticked on the washstand and the moon soaked with wet light his tangled clothes upon the floor. Each night he added to the pattern of his fancies until drowsiness closed down upon some vivid scene with an oblivious embrace. For a while, these reveries provided an outlet for his imagination. They were a satisfactory hint of the unreality of reality, a promise that the rock of the world was founded securely on a fairy's wing. I just adore that paragraph. Um, there's, there's so much beautiful description. Uh, and I, I love the, the ending on a fairy's wing. Like, it just shows how like dreamy the whole book is. I mean, this is like a perfect example of, of you know, the dreaminess of the book. And then amongst this, there's like beautiful, actual, tangible details, you know, like the clothes on the floor tangled up. You know, the like it, it's on a washstand and the moon, the moon is wet. You know, it's like not the clothes that are wet. It's like the moon that that is wet. It's just little things like that. It's just like absolute poetry. And the book is full of it, full of stuff like this. Uh, this is, I think, like the pinnacle, the best line. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, one thing that it was uh, Oh, this is, I have a little mark here. Our eyes lifted over the rose beds and the hot lawn and the weedy refuse of the dog days along shore. Slowly, the white wings of the boat moved against the blue cool limit of the sky. Ahead lay the scalloped ocean and the abounding blessed isles. No, I don't know why. That's like, it's an, I mean, yeah, just another example is really, it's like, it's just, there's goodness everywhere. Uh, one of the, the critiques uh, that others have had, obviously, is it's very convoluted uh, near the end where that accident happens. Um, it's a little bit of a spoiler there. It's just the way it happens. It, it's weird. So I don't actually want to spoil that too much. I'd rather talk about uh, any other things. But I mean, it's it's as near perfect, and it's like it's just such a smooth read. And I, you know, there's not much else to say about it. It it's truly a masterpiece. I haven't seen any of the movies. I should add, um, I'm not really interested in seeing the movies because I feel like books that are this good, there's no sense. Like why why watch the movie? And it's not a long book. Uh, one last little story. Um, what's cool is. I saw this cover as like a lithographic print signed. 
I believe it was by the artist in Long Island at the Nassau Museum of Fine Art. And that was kind of a cool thing because here I am like a little, well, not a little, but like, you know, I'm a little immigrant kid uh, moving to Canada, growing up in Ottawa and reading these great works of literature. And even recently when I reread this, I read it in New York and I read it within the span of a year like that I experienced this, uh, seeing this lithograph signed in Long Island and I was going back and forth to Long Island and it was just kind of, it's amazing to actually see those locations that the, the novels are, are set in and to see them in real life um, and to see, you know, reproductions of this great artwork that is such a famous cover. And this is another example of a book where the image of the cover is nearly as famous and recognizable as the, the book itself. I mean, actually, you see this cover and almost anybody and everybody will know exactly what, what book it's for. And that's really a, a neat thing to consider uh, when it comes to literature. You know, the, the, these iconic covers, um, and maybe it's because, you know, the book is so good that the cover just, you know, it's like ingrained in, in people's minds. There's certainly some por uh, artist portraits, like Dostoevsky is a famous one. Um, there's some images of like, there's like an old man in the sea kind of portrait that I think was on one of the books that's fairly famous, like a kind of a portrait of a face with uh, a pipe in, in the sailor's mouth. But yeah, this is a, a great example of, of an iconic cover and a highly recommended book from my perspective. And a quick, uh, fun, easy read. It took everything I could muster not to like, you know, immediately start writing and be inspired as soon as I put, finished this book. So, Highly recommended.